All right, thanks for watching. And today we would like to construct the rational numbers starting from the integers. Because think about this, what is a rational number? Let's say one half. You would think, okay, well, if I give you two numbers, let's say one and two, you can construct a fraction one half. So you might almost say that a fraction is just a pair of numbers. But that is not quite true because look at the fraction two fourths. It's the same as a fraction one half, but the pair one two is not the same as the pair two four. So what we would like to say is that a fraction is a pair of numbers, but with the additional condition that, for instance, one half is two fourth. And how would we formulate this? Well, again, just using some simple algebra, what does it mean for two fractions to be equal? Well, that's the same thing as saying AD equals BC. I know, determinant gang, raise your hand, but uh, not, I don't know what it has to do with determinants, but still. So in other words, two fractions are the same if and only if you know, the cross things are the same. And therefore, what we would like to do, we would like to define the fractions as follows. So let A be the set of integers, well, almost times integers, except remember that we cannot divide by zero. So think, for instance, one comma two, right? And then what we would like to do, we would like to say two fractions are equal, except not quite equal as a number, but equal as an equivalence relation. So define the relation. Again, squiggle on A, just as follows. We say AB, it's squiggle CD, so two fractions, again, are equivalent if and only if AD equals BC. Well, of course you can define any relations on sets, that's not a problem, but what's important is we have to show this is an equivalence relation. This is really like being equal. So fact, squiggle is an equivalence relation. And this is a very, has a very specific meaning. So there are three things we have to show. First of all, we have to show an element is always equivalent to itself. So AD is equivalent to AB. But again, what does that mean? It means we have to show A times B equals B times A. So that's just by the definition. So AB equals BA at least for the integers that is correct, maybe not for non-abelian stuff, but again, let's keep it real. Then the next thing we have to show is that if AB is equivalent to BA, so if AB is equivalent to CD, then CD is equivalent to AB. So if X is equal to Y, then Y is equal to X. But what does that mean? This means AD equals BC. And the question is, does this imply CB equals DA? Well, pretty much, because you see this is the same thing as AD and this is the same thing as BC. So indeed that is correct. And lastly, we need to show transitivity, which means if AB is equivalent to CB and CD is equivalent to EF. So if A is B, if X is Y and Y is Z, does that follow that X is Z? Do we have that AD is equivalent to EF? And this uses a little bit of algebra. So what we know is AD is BC and then CF is DE. And what we have to show is AF is BE. But here's the thing. 
things. So we can actually solve for things here. And basically what we want to do, we want to solve for one variable in terms of the other, but just be careful. We cannot divide by zero. So we really have to see what is non-zero and what is zero. I mean, for instance, what we do have is that this D is non-zero. So A is just BC over D. So in other words, what do we have? AF, okay. it's simply A, so A is BC over D. Okay, times F. And that becomes BCF over D. But what is CF? That's just DE. So we get BDE, like a PDE, but with a D over D, and that is BE. So indeed, AF is BE. So indeed, now we're happy this is an equivalence relation. It's like being equal. And the nice thing is once you have an equivalence relation, you can talk about equivalence classes. So in other words, um, what is a class of children? It's just everyone who's taking the same class as a certain uh, child or the same class as you. I'm not saying you're a child, but yeah. Uh, in other words, what's your classmate? Is anyone who's taking the same class as you? And it's the same thing with fractions. So in other words, what is A over B? Now we can actually define it is defined as the equivalence class of uh, the pair A comma B. So in other words, what is AB? It's the set of all pairs, let's say CD, such that CD is equivalent to AB. In other words, let's look at the element AB and just see all the things that are related to it. So there's CD, that might be related, that might be related, etc. etc. So this whole class we call that a over B. But of course, there's some stuff that's not related to it, and that would be a different class or a different fraction. Now, I know it looks very esoteric, but let me give you a specific example. So for instance, let's find the equivalence class of, let's say, 1 comma 2. So what does that mean? Suppose CD is related to 1 comma 2. So this is AB if you want. So again, what this means is the cross terms are the same. So C times 2, so in other words, 2C equals D. So in other words, what this means is D is always twice times, so the second term is always twice times the first term. So let me give you a couple of examples of those pairs. Well, of course there's one comma two, but then also two comma four, three comma six, I don't know, minus one comma minus two. So in other words, all those things, we think of them as the same. And this huge set, that's what we call one half. Okay. Which kind of makes sense. Again, I told you that one half is the same as two fourths, is the same as three sixths. So really this interesting thing is all this stuff has been going in your mind without even thinking about this. In other words, we're just thinking in terms of equivalence classes without even noticing that. And the awesome thing is, by the way, using that we can define the usual fraction operations. For instance, 
Remember A over B plus C over D. That's the same thing as AD uh, plus CD over BD. Ah, BD. And let's see, hopefully I have time. Yes. Uh, and so in particular, what does that mean in terms of equivalence classes? What's the sum of two fractions? All that this means is the way you define two fractions is the equivalence class of A comma B plus the equivalence of C comma D. It's defined to be the equivalence class of AD plus CD and then comma BD. But of course, you can define whatever you want, but you have to show it makes sense. So technically, what you have to show is that this is independent of whichever element you choose. But then this, if you want, you can do alone at home. It's just a matter of doing some algebra. And again, that's how you can also define all the other algebraic operations. All right, I hope you like this little fractional extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.